Hi everyone, my name is Jean Carrière, and I'll be presenting the bi-directional data exchange workflow using Autodesk Revit and the IES virtual environment. Our company, Trailloop, is a building performance consulting company based in Ottawa, and it's through developing our technical process with building information modeling that we develop our online education portion of our company. Now, for the last six years, I've been working in the architectural and engineering industry where I've been integrating BIM models as part of the energy modeling process and teaching other practitioners to do the same for their design projects. Now, when I first started out, the integration process had many issues, but instead of going back to the old ways of doing things, I kept working through those issues and then developed fundamental modeling techniques. And it's since I developed these modeling techniques through lots of trial and error, I now don't need to worry about my Revit models not integrating properly. Instead, my productivity has increased and I'm able to deliver high quality results earlier in the design process. One of my latest hypotheses was to exchange information bi-directionally between IES VE and Autodesk Revit. This objective required us to build upon our proven techniques of seamlessly integrating BIM models. Now, there were many factors for attempting this exercise, but one of them is the UK's level two BIM mandate. Even though I'm not from the UK, I'd like to think of this as a global standard for BIM, and I still feel like I should be working towards meeting this objective, as it holds a lot of technical merit. Now, by definition, achieving level two means to create a single environment which stores shared asset data and information accessible to all individuals who are required to produce, use, and maintain it. So this bi-directional objective was tested with two similar energy modeling projects consisting of eight stories each and about 1,500 spaces. This meant that manual data exchange would be extremely cumbersome to a point that the effort would exceed the value. Fortunately, we managed to make this idea work and the lessons we've learned were beyond my expectations. I wanna get started with some core BIM concepts to establish a solid foundation and explain how it is we prepare our projects. The first thing you'll need to know is what a BIM execution plan is and how it can help you manage your projects. A BIM execution plan provides you with a project specific framework where you can record goals, protocols, and information exchange processes, along with other critical elements that the project team identifies in order to fully utilize the value of BIM for the chosen project. You can also expand on this plan with a model progression specification. This is a, de a description of the steps in which a model element can logically progress from the lowest level of conceptual approximation to the highest level of representational precision. This means we need to define each model element with their level of detail that is required at each phase. There are five levels of detail, ranging from level 100 through to 500, and they represent the minimum dimensional, spatial, and quantitative data included in a model element. A model element is a portion of the model that represents a component, a system, or an assembly within a building. As the design develops, various elements of the model will progress from one level of detail to the next at different rates. For example, most elements will need to be at a level of detail 300 at the end of the detailed design phase. And you can take these elements to a level of detail 400 for the shop drawing process during construction, and eventually to 500 for facilities operations. Although, to perform a successful energy model integration, you're going to need a level of detail of about 200, which represents accurate positioning of model elements, such as walls, doors, windows, and so on including additional detail will only result in wasted efforts. So how this fits in the BIM execution plan is that you'll identify each model element and their level of detail required at each phase and which a model element author or individual will be responsible for managing and coordinating the development of that specific model element. This may seem granular, but it'll ensure that each person in your design team knows which elements they're responsible for and to what level of detail they should develop it to. Now you can be sure to expect all the necessary information from the architect and the engineer at each design phase in order to perform a thorough and complete energy analysis. And it's, it's by using this type of model element definition that we created Revit families with parameters, which we then use to exchange information to and from IES, which I'll explain in a minute. Now I'm gonna share with you some of the modeling tips I've learned over the years. And it starts with a high level of precision to a degree that being off by just one inch can cause an error in the model. Which leads me to the next tip, to align your model elements to their center lines. The analytical surfaces are exported from the center lines and it's best to stick to that 
when adding components, such as curtain walls within exterior walls. Then you've got to make sure that you've got the proper enclosures for all your rooms, even shafts and bulkheads. Like I mentioned earlier, the level of detail should be out of 150 to 200, which means the elements should be simple. You should also place the fixed and most rigid walls first, such as the exterior walls, and then work your way to the core and interior walls. Finally, you'll need to develop some patience because it usually doesn't work on the first try, but then you can simply troubleshoot the errors one at a time. This diagram may be overwhelming at first, but bear with me and I'll break it down bit by bit. We start off with the Revit project in the center. This project contains spaces where we can insert custom parameters, such as those found in a typical energy modeling space. Then we've got the Revit families on the left side, in which we can also categorize with shared parameters. These families can be designed as simple cube objects at first, but they will serve to populate the necessary data in your schedules. Now, how this works is that you import your Revit model into the virtual environment, assuming that you've got a seamless integration at this stage. The virtual environment gives you easy access to the tabular room data and allows you to export this data to Excel. Now, from the Revit side, you can also align your schedules and room names, and then also export this data to Excel. What you're going to need to do next is create a data sorting spreadsheet, which allows you to sort each data set independently and with each other. The main reason for this is that when you get in the details of things using Apache HVAC and zones, those spaces are sorted by their room IDs. And if you iterate your designs, then these IDs will become disconnected from Revit's IDs. This is why you need the middle sorting spreadsheet to be able to bring simulated data from the virtual environment back to Revit and vice versa. In essence, we've opened up a portal to move information between both software applications, creating a data highway. The time spent exchanging information became negligible, which opened up the opportunity of iterative design by leveraging building information modeling and energy simulation together in harmony. It's not quite a synchronization, but it's more of an alignment of data. Here we have a temporal database displaying the time it takes to iterate the billing design using the bi-directional workflow. The transaction time is the time period during which a fact is stored in the database is considered to be true. This accounts for the time it takes to build an energy model and produce accurate simulated data. The valid time is the time for which a fact is true in the real world. In this case, the valid time does not start when the energy simulation ends, but when the data is successfully migrated to the BIM database. The decision time is the time period for which a person takes to provide feedback. With all this in mind, we use the BIM integrated energy modeling workflow to build an energy model, and then we perform design modifications to it. We modified the geometry in Revit, re-imported the data, ran the simulation, exchanged the data from IES back to Revit, and shared this model with our team. The results were that the time it took to perform each iteration became a fraction of the time it took for the previous run. This means we can use this workflow to deliver effective early stage building optimization results while even managing this process throughout the design without any rework. Instead, you're constantly adding value to your building model. To summarize, I'd like to highlight some of the benefits that emerged from developing this workflow, which leverages both Revit and the virtual environment in a shared BIM environment. The first is synergy. You're able to incorporate your energy modeling team as part of the overall design process and collaborate with the design team using Revit as an information authoring tool. Then, productivity. The time it takes to construct energy models using Revit can be much faster than using Modelit or SketchUp, especially on large projects. You're also able to keep your inputs and assumptions transparent by communicating them to your design team for validation. By standardizing the workflow, you're able to manage your staff for large projects using work sharing techniques through Revit. And finally, interoperability and data integration is an important factor these days and will definitely help you future-proof your efforts using this workflow process. Now, for the past few months, I've been developing an online course which packages all the advanced modeling techniques I've learned over the years in order to provide the industry with the necessary steps to execute a flawless BIM integrated energy model every time. Some of the learning objectives are listed here, and they include things like learning how to integrate your model, but also how to iterate those design changes, along with setting the proper inputs for exchanging information between applications. As the instructor of the course, 
You'll be able to interact with me through assignments for on-demand feedback, and you also receive eight hours of continuing education after completion. This course is available online through our website. If you want to know more about how BIM can help you with energy modeling, we're also running a free video series on our website, which I invite you to join the conversation. The link is listed at the bottom of this slide. Thanks, and I'd be happy to take any questions.